Assalamu alaikum. Uh, my name is Malik Tengmu Siraj. Uh, let's continue our third part of Web and HTTP lecture. That is Web Cache, which is a proxy server. Uh, so, what is the goal of proxy server? What is proxy server? What is Web Cache? We will talk about all those things. Uh, uh, goal is to satisfy the client request without involving the original server. The, the goal is to actually uh, uh, handle the client request, satisfy the client without actually informing the original server, without actually getting the data from the original server. And uh, generally the purpose of proxy server is uh, uh, somewhat similar to the caching of the data, uh, the data that we do cache. Uh, you already uh, actually learned about the course of microprocessor and computer architecture where you talked about caches. Uh, uh, L1, L2, and L3 caches, and processor actually stores our data in a cache uh, so that whenever uh, uh, instructions require the data, the data is already present in the cache. So it, it hit the cache and it doesn't need to fetch that data from the memory and put it on a cache and use it, put it on a memory, uh, put it on the registers and use it. So uh, the uh, if the data found on the processor cache then processor executes fast execution become fast and if the data doesn't find uh, if, if the processor do, do not find the data on the cache what it will do is uh, cache misses and processor go to the memory and fetch the data it will takes more time uh, for a processor to actually process the same instruction if cache enters it so the purpose of the cache initially is the same uh, is uh, let's say uh, to have a cache so that whenever a browser requests uh, to the server, uh, user quality of experience improves uh, if the browser has a cache and that cache has a data. Uh, so a browser fetches that data from the browser cache and uh, displays that data. Uh, so it will increase the user quality of experience. Obviously, that increases the rating of the browser if the browsers are doing such functionality. This is the aspect of one aspect. There's another aspect of that. If uh, now in, in that aspect, uh, let us not talk about a browser cache. Let's talk about an institutional cache, cache uh, an ISP cache or a home cache. Okay. Uh, you are all you all are using internet and nowadays you will find a data is quite precious uh, the amount of data that you are using is quite precious uh, uh, you will find out uh, you can immediately utilize the data let's say uh, let's say i'm watching uh, 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 some video in a youtube i'm watching my parents is watching my parents are watching uh, my wife is watching so uh, let's assume that a same video that is published on a youtube I am watching from my home, my wife is watching, my father is watching and my missus uh, is watching. So we all four are watching that video. Uh, let's say that video is published at uh, uh, 9 a.m. and we all start watching, uh, let's say I start watching it at 9.15, my wife start watching on a separate machine at 9.20, and my father start watching at 9.30. My mother start watching that video on some other uh, time which is 9.45 so uh, we, uh, what we are doing is uh, uh, I, once I start watching it I, uh, my, uh, my browser, my player actually fetches the data from the YouTube server and uh, it's display the data to me so uh, I'm watching it and then after some time my wife start watching it uh, so so now my wife start watching it uh, so the way her browser on her laptop fetches the data from the youtube server and utilizing the my uh, access link my bandwidth of uh, from the service provider that i've already uh, buy it uh, after some time my parents start watching it and they all are utilizing they are streaming from the youtube server so actually the bandwidth that i buy from the uh, from my access from my internet service provider is being utilized by all of us at the same time but it's the redundant copy of data that we all watching at a different instance of time so uh, this is the actually this actually waste a lot of bandwidth uh, what if what if uh, 
we request we we all request to a server that server we call as a proxy server and that proxy server actually find out if that streaming video is already present in that proxy server so it start uh, sending that uh, stored video that is already stored in proxy server to the uh, to the uh, to the user if that video is not present then it uh, send a request to the server and if so uh, and uh, stream from that server and uh, display uh, send a copy to the one client and also store a copy on its cache so when a second user request uh, it uh, uh, instead of uh, sending a request to the original server it uh, send a copy which is already stored in its cache to that client similarly now we all four are watching the same video but at this point uh, my uh, access link utilization is reduced now because we are not all streaming from the actual server uh, i'm only one who is streaming from the actual server but the rest of uh, the clients are streaming from the cache that is already there so the purpose of uh, web cache is to satisfy the client request without involving the original server uh, user sets the browser uh, uh, web cache via uh, web accesses via cache okay you can you can actually we will we will took, uh, look into it kaise aap web cache set karte hain in different uh, in your browsers browser send all the http request to a cache uh let's say these are the clients these clients actually configured their browser so that the browser uses this web cache uh, uh, in, uh, uh, and then if that data is not present on this web cache then that request is sent to the original servers okay uh, uh, objects in the cache uh, cache returns the object else uh, cache requests the object from the original server then returns the object to the client so let's say this actually uh, is a pro, uh, is a client which requests this server http request is being sent uh, now this proxy server find out there is no data there is no data present or uh, corresponding to that request it send that request to the original server uh, this original server and then this original server sends a reply to this it store its copy on its cache and then send a reply to this one now after some time this client again requests the same page in uh, it then find out that this page is already cached in a uh, uh, stored in its cache so it send its copy to it yeah. so uh, now assuming that this is our home network and this is one of the uh, router that has a proxy server configured so it first of all check that data if that data is already there it it send a reply http reply to it Uh, it send a reply. It send the data to the at user instead of sending a request to the original server. So this is the purpose of the proxy server. <coughs> More about proxy server. Uh, cache act as a as as both um, uh, client and the server. So uh, now, uh, if you look into this example, we will find out that uh, the cache that this uh, proxy server has. it is a server for this client it act as a server for this client and it act as a client for the server so once uh, it it is listing on port 80 so it inters, uh, it is listing on a port so uh, it it receives that request and then find out uh, uh, and then uh, and then find out whether the data is present on its cache or not if not then it act as a client and send a request to the original server so that cache act as both client and the server server for the original server uh, requesting the client client for the original typically the cache is installed by the isps universities uh, company or residential isps okay these are the uh, isps and the purpose is all clear to all of us why web, web caching reduce the response time from the client request okay it reduces the response time because now every request does not go to the uh, uh, original server it is already uh, Uh, satisfied by the cache installed locally so it reduces the time it reduces traffic on the institutional access network it reduces the time on the access link because now less request is sent on the access link so you can live with the low uh, bandwidth uh, internet helps when the cache enables poor content uh, uh, provider to effectively deliver content so to uh, does not peer to peer file sharing okay so it, 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 we cannot say ki aap uh, 
हर जगह पे कैश ही लगाते हैं इट इट डजेंट सॉल्व ऑल दर्पज यू हैव टू अफेक्टिवली एंड सॉल्व कैश है सो लेट्स now let's try <clears throat> now let's let's try to understand the web caching with an example so that we have a better grip on it uh, and we also understand the numerical aspect of those things uh, let's assume that uh, the average object size uh, is 1 uh, megabit 1 uh, megabits per second 1 megabits theek hai we already are familiar with the objects uh, so let's assume the average object size is 1 megabit per uh, 1 megabit Uh, average request rate from the browser to the original okay uh, okay let's try to understand the web caching uh, with an example so that we have a better understanding of it uh, so in this example this is an institutional network which is shown uh, it has a uh, 100 megabit per second uh, of lan network uh, this institutional network is connected uh, to the isp within uh, 15 megabits per second access network and uh, this access network uh, then is connected to multiple original servers so now let's assume that uh, the object size is 1 megabits Okay, so we already familiar with the object. So let's have its size so that we can have a better numerical understanding of that, of it. Uh, average request rate from browsers uh, to original server is 15 requests per second. So it it says that these browsers, uh, these are the systems in the institutional network that send a request to the browsers, and let's assume that they are sending 15 requests per second to the original server. Average data rate to the browser is 15 megabit. So average data rate to the browser is uh, object size is 15 megabit per second, and they are sending 15 requests per second. If we multiply them, we get uh, 15 megabits per second. So this is the average data rate to the browser. RTT from the institutional network. This the RTT from this router to the original server is two seconds. Okay. and access link rate is 15 megabit this is the access link that they purchased uh, 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 and assuming that this is a 15 megabit per second access link now uh, uh, in this network uh, let's see uh, lan utilization this is the lan network uh, if we want to find out its utilization uh, lan utilization so we know that uh, utilization is traffic intensity on the lan how much traffic is going on on the lan uh, that actually uh, 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 is identified by its utilization so it is 15 requests per seconds are sent uh, and each request size is uh, uh, 1 megabit per second okay so this is actually 15 megabits per second and divided by 100 megabit per second this is the uh, data rate of the lan so it is 100 megabit per second so if we divide them we get 0.15 which is 15% utilization so uh, with this the lan utilization is uh, 15% which is not very uh, which is very small amount access list utilization we already know that uh, total uh, data on the browser is 15 megabit per second so this all data is going on this access link so uh, the access link has a size of 15 megabit per second so the utilization of access link is 100% ठीक है 15 megabit per second divided by 15 megabit per second so it is 100% utilization Uh, so total delay is total delay is uh, delay from this network uh, from this router to this and delay from this uh, and lastly delay from uh, in this network so uh, internet delay access delay and a lane delay internet delay we already know is 2 uh, seconds uh, access delay access delay is uh, 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 since utilization is increased to 100% uh, 100% we already know if the utilization is increasing then packet start dropping uh, once packet to stop dropping so delay is increasing once delay is increasing so uh, you have uh, our poor quality of experience so this delay is actually increases uh, from a microsecond to milliseconds uh, and a lan delay which is has a very 15% utilization so it delay should be around microseconds okay so uh, because of the utilization less utilization so delay is less So, uh, how we are going to solve this problem? There are two solutions. Uh, uh, there are two solutions exist to so in order to solve this problem. This is the problem, which is uh, link utilization, which is going to hundred percent. So, there are two solutions. One solution is 
uh, actually increases this link delay to this link to uh, from 15 megabit per second to 150 megabits per second so uh, you are paying more money uh, you are paying more money to the uh, isp and get uh, a 10 uh, 100 uh, uh, get 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 more link so actually your access link is increasing that actually results into the 10 percent of the access link utilization okay this link utilization is actually uh, uh, 10 percent so ultimately uh, uh, once 10 percent throughput delay is internet delay plus this access delay plus LAN delay so this access delay is further reduced to in minutes uh, sorry in uh, uh, from uh, sorry this should be this should be here So uh, access delay uh, should further reduce from minutes to milliseconds, but at the cost of uh, uh, at, at the cost of some something. So and that cost is the money that uh, you are putting in order to buy more uh, uh, bigger bigger bandwidth link. So increase access link speed is not cheap actually. So what is another solution is another solution is to install a local web cache into your institution network uh, on the same link. And uh, uh, once you installed an uh, uh, institution cache, so it's a server uh, uh, that is running and it is running uh, 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 as a web proxy. So then the question is how to compute the utilization. So uh, it's a tricky thing, but we can compute the utilization this way. So let's assume we have a local web cache installed. Uh, uh, suppose that the cache hit rate is 4.4. Uh, so uh, let's assume that all the traffic that uh, your institutional network is generating, only uh, four, uh, 40 of that traffic is actually served by the local cache. Generally, this is the good number, uh, uh, and 40 percent of the requests are satisfied by the cache. 60 percent of the requests are satisfied by the original server. So 40 percent of the requests that this institutional network is generating is actually satisfied by this cache. And whereas the 60% uh, 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 of the request goes to the original server. So uh, this actually reduces the access link utilization. Access link utilization is 60% of the request uses access link. So it is further reduced to uh, uh, 15 uh, megabit per second is the total traffic that is going on to the access link. Now it is reduced to 0.6 sorry uh, it is multiplied to 0.6 and it, it is reduced to uh, uh, 9 megabit per second so this is the utilization if you multiply you get 9 megabit per second so this is the utilization of this link as this utilization decreases so it delays decreases from millisecond uh, from minutes to uh, milliseconds so uh, uh, delays are decreasing uh, so data rate uh, to the browsers over the access link is point this into this 9 megabit per second so if you see this utilization then 9 to 15 is 58 percent utilization okay that is very less uh, but it is uh, there's some delay. total delays uh, is coming uh, 0.6 percent of the requests are handled by the original server whereas 40 percent 0.4 of the requests are handled by this thing so 0.4 percent multiplied by the delay that is that is involved in the original server and 0.4 multiplied by the delay that is uh, delay for the request that is handled by the local cache. So 0.6 multiplied by 2 plus 0.4 multiplied by some uh, milliseconds of the delay that is uh, because of this thing. So if you multiply them, you get 1.2 seconds, which is very less, uh, uh, especially for the cost of to increase the link of uh, uh, to 150 megabit per second. So there are three different uh, caches that we talked about that are present on uh, different uh, layers. Uh, uh, we talked about cache of a processor, uh, just to give you insight because you already are familiar with the cache, that cache. Um, uh, I talked about the cache of a browser and the cache of the ISP's caches, uh, institution cache. And we have seen a detailed description of the cache, institution cache that actually reduces the load on the network. So let's try to see some practical aspect of the cache. Uh, so uh, uh, in your browser, once you open a browser, so I have opened a Google Chrome browser. Uh, 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 we can uh, we can actually uh, set up a proxy server in our uh, uh, our system, uh, our browser. 
and the proxy server is configured uh, on our system. So if we open this browser and go to the advanced, go down and then you see a system, open your, uh, open your computer proxy server setting. So this is the proxy server setting that you can configure. So if I turn on the manual proxy, so I can provide an address, this is an IP address and I can provide a port where my proxy server is listing on. So uh, it means that when I configure this thing, whenever I'm sending, whenever I'm opening a page of google.com, my system actually send that request on this IP address and this port number instead of sending into the Google. So this is the proxy server which then actually uh, sees that packet and uh, then uh, uh, check the local cache if packet is present. Okay, if not, then it will do all other stuff that we talked about. So this is how proxy is configured in a browser. Uh, this mode of proxy uh, is called a, a, a intercept mode in which uh, you need to actually configure your browser to send a uh, request to that proxy server uh, or a web cache server. There is another mode which is called transparent mode. So let's try to see that transparent mode. But in that transparent mode, we are not actually configuring the client side, but we are doing something on the server side so that uh, it actually intercept those packets and uh, do uh, something. So um, there, there are many actually utilities of, uh, there are many actually uh, uh, proxy server softwares. One such software uh, and which is a well-known software which is called a squid. So this is the squid cache. Uh, so let's see what is squid. Squid is, uh, squid is again a proxy server software. Uh, squid is a caching proxy server for web supporting HTTP, HTTPS, FTP and many more. So it's a uh, caching proxy server for HTTP, HTTPS, FTP and many more. And uh, you can actually configure this software as an intercept mode and a transparent mode. In intercept mode, uh, which uh, which is we always need uh, to uh, configure the client side. Whereas in case of a transparent mode, we don't need to uh, uh, we don't need to actually uh, configure the client side. What we need to do is uh, we need to configure the proxy server so that every client request goes to this system, pass from this system. So once uh, every client request passed from this system, so this uh, proxy server actually opens the packet and sees uh, inside the packet. And based upon uh, 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 its result, it, it send a request to the server or not. You can do much more things, many more things from this uh, proxy server, which is uh, squared proxy server. Uh, 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 you can actually configure this proxy server in your home too. Uh, you can easily configure this thing. Uh, maybe in future, I'll uh, have a video that will tell you how to install this proxy server at your home and uh, use it. Okay, so um, so browser also utilizes the cache. Browser also have a cache, and they are utilizing that cache. How they are utilizing? Um, uh, they are utilizing uh, in a simple way they send a conditional get request and um, uh, if that uh, object is present uh, so http protocol also has a privilege of uh, uh, utilizing the cache it has a tag called if modified since state uh, uh, and that browser actually uses a uh, browser also manages a local cache in the uh, in, in, in that so but you generally experience that you open a web page uh, for the first time once you open a web page for the first time it takes a lot of time to open a web page but uh, once you open a page for the second time and for the third time it will open quickly on that page uh, uh, yeah, yeah. So it means that a browser also stores a data of the web page on its local cache that it is managing. So once it has a data in its local cache, it sends a conditional GET request to the original server, uh, uh, to the server, and uh, uh, once with a tag of if modified since. So the uh, server actually tells that uh, uh, by having that tag it says that I have a page that is stored in this and it is 
uh, not modified since that date servers uh, checks that if, if if it has updated that data on its web uh, uh, against uh, after that date so it send the data back otherwise uh, it send a reply back that uh, data is not changed uh, so the, this packet is a small packet that is sent by a server so instead of sending the whole data is sending a small data and browser then uh, displays a data that it is already stored in its cache to uh, the browser of a client goal is to do not uh, do not send object if cache has up to the data on the cache version uh, no object transmission delay uh, load link delays cache specific data uh, of uh, the cache copy http request is modified so client sent a data with a tag if modified date uh, to the server uh, object not modified before that date server send a reply with a, a status code of 304 uh, we have seen the different status code uh, 200 uh, is okay uh, 404 page not found uh, 201 redirect and there is a status code of uh, 304 which is not modified uh, uh, once it receives the data so it uh, it displays the data so if uh, data is modified after that so it send uh, http okay 200 with the data so this is the same response uh, once data is modified and this is uh, what browser actually uses uh, for this purpose so let's see uh, this thing in more detail um, uh, in this uh, in this Wireshark, uh, what I did is I uh, opened a browser and opened a web page, uh, HTTP web page of uh, the, uh, I just opened this web page uh, for the first time in my browser. My cache is clear at this point, and uh, uh, once page is open, I open another tab and open the same uh, page. Uh, for the first time, it, it takes some time to load this page, and for the second time, it immediately load. So it means that my browser actually set a tag of if modified. So let's see uh, how we can explore this tag. So uh, let's say I apply a filter of HTTP over there. So uh, I don't want to see the other traffic right now. I'm, I'm just interested to see only HTTP traffic. So I, I'm applying a tag of HTTP traffic. So now this hole has all, a lot of traffic, but that on, the traffic only represents the HTTP protocol. So it's the initial get request that my web, uh, my web browser sends to this host name. So uh, if you look into this, it has a connection keep alive, uh, upgrade hai, user agent hai, accept hai, encoding hai, uh, HTTP request and, and, and different other tags. So it has this response, which is saying that it is a nine assembled P, uh, uh, reassembled TCP segments. Uh, so there are nine TCP packets and then this browser reassembled them and get this thing. So uh, it is again sending a this request. Okay, obviously, uh, uh, last me reference to your logo is going to send kar raha So let's see where is uh, another uh, HTTP request that I open. These belongs to some reference objects that my browser is opening. So this is another HTTP request that is sent on the same server. Uh, if it has a if non match if it has a tag of if it has a it has a tag of if non match uh, in this thing so if not match so so what actually reply with this thing uh, 304 not modified so, okay so it is telling uh, this page is not modified so it then display immediately display that uh, browser uh, that data on my browser uh, that responds to this thing 